Hello, I'm Susan Miller. This is my first talk, and we're going to talk about the grand mutation. Only astrologers give names to good aspects that sound scary. <laughs> the grand mutation is something nice. It's actually something pretty exciting, and I wanted you to know about it. So stick with me on this. It's interesting. Every 20 years, Jupiter and Saturn meet. They only meet once. Occasionally they go retrograde and they'll meet as many as three times in a year. But most of the time, like this year, only once. December 21st, 2020. Now, every time they've met in the past 200 years, they've met in Earth signs. Now, when Jupiter and Saturn meet every 20 years, they color society. The fashions, the literature, the theater, the music, the politics, governments, everything is colored by the sign that that conjunction takes place. The last one was in May 2000 in Taurus. Now, except for one exception, which I'll get to in a little while, Jupiter and Saturn have always met in Earth signs. Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, and then started all over again <laughs> in a 60 year cycle. But uh, that took close to 200 years. This year, they're going to meet in air signs, Aquarius. But let's first look at what happened over the past 200 years. What have we accomplished in that time? Well, we had roads and bridges and tunnels. We had cathedrals and skyscrapers. We uh, started the Industrial Revolution. We laid down railroad tracks <laughs> uh, and we were connecting through the roads, through the bridges, through those railroads. At some point we had aviation. Uh, now uh, we also had very important manufacturing and the assembly line. And money was very important. And how much you had often gave you your status, which, you know, it hurts my feelings. You're more than what you own. And as my father used to tell us, you only borrow things in life. You have to give them back when you leave. <laughs> you only have it for a little while, and then you give it back. <laughs> now we have a very different emphasis. Aquarius, is very light and mobile as opposed to earth, which is more heavy and stable. What you know will be more important than what you have. The experiences you have will be more important too. So travel will pick up. I know right now with the pandemic, there isn't very much travel at all, if any, only for dire emergencies but eventually we will travel again. <laughs> Even though they keep saying on television, our whole life is gonna be different. Not forever, <laughs> just for a while. So uh, I, I want you to think about this. Now Aquarius, where we're going into for the next 200 years, it'll be Aquarius, Gemini, Libra, and then it'll keep rotating for the next 200 years. So we're really lucky to be born at a time when we're making the walk over the bridge to the new emphasis. Uh, it, uh, it will be a, an enormous emphasis on high technology. You know, we have the CRISPR in Switzerland, which uh, now can work on genes and they can take out eventually genes that have hurt people that have given them diseases that made them suffer. This is a very good thing. 
But of course, we'll have to have conversations about designer babies and laws against that kind of thing. And governments are always slow to catch up with technology. <laughs> I started my site in 1995, astrologyzone.com, December 14th. And it was the Wild West when I started on the internet. People were stealing my federal trademark. Big companies, companies whose names you know, and laughing in my face and saying, we have 200 lawyers, Susan. How many do you have? One, maybe two? In the end, you'll win, but we'll make so much money on using your name in the meantime that um, it's worth it. I was horrified. It was like riding a bucking Bronco. And it will be that way in the beginning with, uh, with this new emphasis that Saturn and Jupiter are creating. Uh, you're going to see probably flying taxi cabs, <laughs> which I'm in Manhattan. <laughs> that terrifies me. I'm on the 30th floor up here. <laughs> I don't want a flying taxi cab to go through my window. So I don't know if we'll have them in Manhattan, <laughs> even though we'll probably need them. No, but I am looking forward to driverless cars. That's definitely coming because um, I don't know how to drive. <laughs> no, my father would never let me use his car. And I was in the hospital all those years with a birth defect um, when most kids learn how to drive. <laughs> so I never learned and I'm afraid of 18 wheelers, so it's not gonna happen. <laughs> I'm not gonna learn anytime soon, but there's Uber. But anyway, <laughs> uh, this uh, new emphasis is is going to put an emphasis on groups. Now let me backtrack a little bit. Right now, Saturn's in Aquarius. It was in Capricorn, but it edged out of Capricorn and went into Aquarius, almost like a little guy in a ball game. He ran to first base, he ran to second base, he ran to third base, now he's in home base. He should have stopped, but he kept running. <laughs> he went to first base and the universe said, Saturn, where are you? What are you doing on first base? Get back here. <laughs> you have to finish your tour of duty in Capricorn. And if, if your birthday falls in January, somewhere around the 15th to the 20th, you're feeling Saturn quite a bit. But uh, you're creating a foundation for new life. It's good. I started Astrology Zone when I had your aspect. And everybody said, oh, that's a really hard aspect. You're going to work really hard. You'll probably give up. No, I wasn't going to give up. <laughs> if something means something to you, you don't give up. You work harder. So anyway, <laughs> you're going to accomplish a lot if you're a Capricorn. And Aquarius, you're stepping up. And if you're born around the 21st, 20th, 21st, 22nd, you've been feeling the pressure of Saturn. And if you have Aquarius rising, you're feeling it if it's an early degree or any planet in Aquarius, very early degree. If you have planets in late degrees of Capricorn and a planet can only go from zero to 29 degrees, 59 minutes. so. When I say late, it's in the late twenties. Then you know that it's hovering over those planets and you're feeling the responsibility that planet is lit up. That's a good thing. I like Saturn. I deal well with him. <laughs> and uh, because what you gain with Saturn, you get to keep. Now the reason I brought him up is he's edged, going to edge back into Capricorn on July 1st and finish out his tour of duty, but then he's going to go back to Aquarius and that will happen on December 17th. And then he will stay there. He's not leaving Aquarius until March 7th, 2023. Okay, so he's going in. Okay, so why did he give you this little period from March 30th to July 1st, 
preview? Well, I think all the big planets do that. They always give you a little period of time to see what's coming. I always think of a little periscope on a, uh, a submarine and the little periscope comes up and looks around, tells the captain of the submarine where they are, what's else in the water, <laughs> and, and you're adjusting to it. Now, what do we know about Aquarius? We know that it rules all newly invented forms, especially scientific or mathematical forms. It'll, Aquarius also rules astrology. So during this, the coming era, and it is an era, you may be drawn to astrology. You may want to study it. You may have found those inklings in the past few weeks, since March 20th. Aquarius likes to work in groups for the good of the group. And we just had an eclipse in my other talk, we'll talk about eclipses, but when Mr. George Floyd died and had his funerals, he had several, they were over the weekend of the eclipse, June 5th, and we saw the protesters, and that's so Aquarius, to make change for the greater good. And those protesters were risking their health. And we were all praying that they wouldn't get sick. And we still have another week to go before we know for sure. Because it can incubate for two weeks. I hope you're wearing your mask when you go out. In New York, if you don't wear a mask, you're a pariah. People, people look at you. No, no, we all wear our masks and we wear gloves. <laughs> And we do what we're told and we have the best uh, record right now in the nation for controlling the virus. That virus is coming back in the fall. But we'll talk about that on my other talk. Going back to the grand mutation, you're going to see scientific high-tech discoveries, the likes of which you never imagined and we're never even in science fiction books that you may have read or in movies you've gone to. Aquarius is all about the future. Aquarius keeps her eye on the distant horizon, but is always humanitarian and will give freely. They're not materialistic people. So the era we're going into isn't about materialism. It's not what you have, but what you give to others. It could be that you give to just one person to make their life better. Or maybe you're sacrificing everything to send your children to college. That's okay, that's, that's very Aquarian. <laughs> but if, let's say you're working to help a candidate uh, get elected, that's very Aquarian. Because Aquarius rules the group, the people, the masses of people, as opposed to Leo, which the opposite end of the zodiac, each sign complements the sign opposite it. So Leo is about me and about making, I don't mean me personally, I'm not a Leo, but making the greatest gift of creativity that I can possibly muster within myself and to develop my talents and bring them forth. Aquarius has almost no ego. <laughs> they care about other people and how they can help them. Now next year, uh, the government's gonna be tapped out. They won't have any more money to do deficit spending. I was watching 60 Minutes, Jerome Powell got on TV and said, we gotta pay all that back, you know. I'm allowed as head of the Fed to loan money, but I can't print money. <laughs> no one can. And it'll take about 12 years and we're going to be paying higher taxes, definitely. 
so that I think it's better to know than not know. We must know what's coming. I think, and this is a philosophical feeling I've always had, the thing that messes us up and makes us sad is when we have the wrong expectations. It's very important to have the right expectations and to be realistic because then we can plan for the future. Um, next year, um, this will be a play, but a lot of what you're seeing now, working at home, is going to be part of our future. Aquarius is ruled by Uranus and this little planet, he spins on his belly, he refuses to follow the other, the other planets. So I'm not gonna march in step with you guys, I'm gonna do what I want. He has a very erratic orbit. This is why he's the planet of surprise and unpredictable events. But he's also the planet of genius and creativity, especially in the mathematical area. Now, um, there, will, there will be a lot of people helping people since the government can't help us. Something interesting is happening. Uranus in Taurus right now will be at odds with Saturn in Aquarius and Jupiter's following Saturn two days later, December 19th. So Saturn goes in December 17th. Jupiter follows two days later, Jupiter 19th in Aquarius. So the Aquarians are going to be leading the parade in 2021 for sure. But it's not an easy year. But you know what? My mother uh, always said to me, who, and she taught me astrology, when you're in the ring boxing and showing what's important to you, and it's probably a sweaty process, life's a sweaty process. When you're showing what you believe in, that's life. When you sit in the corner and the referee puts the water on you and the fluffy towel, that's, that's just resting, so you can go back in the next round. I think some of the hardest periods of my life, I achieved the most. You always have to see yourself as the exception to the rule, which I always have. <laughs> if everybody's unemployed, I'm gonna be the one that gets the job. <laughs> and, and if you have that spirit, somehow, the job's come to you. Of course, everything you've done, I have this theory over the past 18 months will come into play now. So even if we're faced with very difficult economic conditions, if you've worked hard, honestly, and ethically over the past 18 months have developed your expertise in your field, you will be valuable and people will want to talk to you and possibly hire you. Or maybe you'll want to set up your own shop, which is very possible too. I think we will be working at home because companies are finding, why should we pay all this rent in very expensive parts of town when some people are happy to work at home? Now, not everyone can work at home, of course. But if you can, it's a good thing. And you can even take a portion of your apartment off on your taxes. You have to ask your accountant. There is a rule and there's a limit. But if you're working home, this is a good thing for you. I think this is the best thing for women. I have a best friend, her name is Anna, and she would travel two and a half hours into the city and two and a half hours back, door to door. She has two children, one has special needs. It was hard for her to move. She needed her mom to help her babysit. There were lots of reasons she had to stay in Connecticut. And I kept saying, Anna, you're using so much energy on the train. 
I know when I wake up every morning how much energy I have and how much I can devote to my projects and I'm really careful with my time because there's so much pressure on me. I'm writing 45,000 words for my website and that's what I wrote for June on Astrology Zone. I'm writing for my app, Daily Horoscope Astrology Zone by Susan Miller on the Apple App Store and Google Play. And I write for several magazines in Europe, Vogue Japan, W Korea, um, S Moda Spain, Claudia Brazil, Vogue China, Vogue Greece. So I'm, I'm always, <laughs> always working, but I, I'm, I'm quarantining really well because I'm used to it. <laughs> I do miss seeing my children, and you know they're grown up now, and they have their own apartments, and and I'm in a high risk because I have an autoimmune, so I have to stay home. I'm under house arrest, <laughs> but I'm okay because I stay busy. I'm productive. Now I want you to think about something. I know what may be going through your head. Oh, does this mean we're going into the age of Aquarius? Yes, full speed ahead, yes. But there's some other reason that we are. The Earth rotates three different ways. Now most people only know two, day and night, and then the four seasons, summer, fall, winter, spring. There's another way. Imagine our entire solar system on a dinner plate, spinning. But as it spins, it moves in an elliptical pattern. So it's spinning, but yet moving in an elliptical pattern. And it's going retrograde. It's going in a backward motion through the constellations. It has been this dinner plate, which we call our solar system, in the sign of Pisces from, for 2,500 years. And that's when we saw the beautiful uh, cathedrals and, and religious paintings. It was the age of religion. And now we're in the age of Aquarius. See, no one can give you an exact date of when that dinner plate moves into the constellation of Aquarius. I happen to think we moved in quite a while ago, but there are astrologers who don't agree with me. <laughs> they feel until Pluto moves in, in 2024, it's not happening. But I, look out your window, I think it's happening. And, uh, We are in that. So uh, Aquarius is very dominant. Now, if you're an air sign, you're going to feel very comfortable with this emphasis on air, because after Aquarius, it'll be Gemini and then Libra. Now I mentioned that there was a little aberration, 1980, where Saturn and Jupiter met in Libra to give a preview of what's coming. And then in 2020, I mean, I'm sorry, in 20, 2000, in the year 2000, which is 20 years after 1980, it, it went back to Earth and went, they both met in Taurus and now they're meeting in Aquarius. Now, nature doesn't make mistakes. I was just thinking about this. Why does nature give us these little previews? And then I came to a, a theory and see if, if you agree with me or you don't. Oh, by the way, you can always write to me on Twitter. It's my favorite because the pictures are so big and you can put links in and you don't have to say it's in my bio, which I find crazy, but I am, <laughs> that's a little editorial. I am on Instagram, I am. And in both cases, my name is at Astrology Zone because 
there are too many Susan Millers. But if you type in Susan Miller, I'm verified, so it should come up as at astrologism. But um, you can voice your opinion. I want to hear what you have to say. Um, there's something else that's kind of interesting. Aquarius is um, associated with vegetarianism and veganism. And uh, when Uranus went into Taurus last year in March, um, there was going to be changes in our food supply. I thought, what could it be? What could it be? Is there more emphasis on taking out hormones and having more organic food? And I think that's possible. I think that will happen. I think there's an enormous understanding of how important what we put in our bodies is and that our alarm makers have to be a little stricter about that. But I never expected food shortages and we are getting them now. The, uh, the farmers on television were saying, I have one field for a mile, that's for supermarkets and that's doing great. I'm selling a lot of crops, but I have another mile for restaurants and another mile for hotels and nobody's buying there, nobody. So the farmers have had to let their fields go fallow. They can't even find the um, workers that they need to help them pick the crops. It's just too expensive and they, they had no choice. And th there was a news story about this. And uh, I was watching ABC News, 6.30 report, and I thought, this is terrible because there's so many people on food bank lines. This is bad, there has to be an answer. Well, apparently there was somebody else watching this in his living room. And he said, I'm a trucker. I'm gonna fix this. He wrote to all his friends and said, look, if I could get this food, would you drive one of my trucks to a poor neighborhood? I'm gonna talk to FEMA. They'll tell me where the food is needed. And I'll get the, you know, the carrots and the lettuce and the potatoes and, all the food, peaches, melons, grapes. And everybody said yes. All his friends said, sign me in. I don't care how many days it takes to truck that food from your, from your farmer's farm to, to where it's needed. And just last week, the poor people got the food. If the food was delivered, he completed it. And he said, look, I, I don't, I'm not a hero. I just want to inspire other companies to do what I did. Use me as a template. And you're going to see a lot of people helping people next year because they're in 2021. You're going to see the need and you're going to see the response. This is going to bring us all together, I hope. Now, when you see a lot of Capricorn planets, like we had this year and the past few years, we've had a lot of Capricorn planets. In January, we had six, and we'll never see seven. In May 2000, we had seven in Libra. I was on CNN with Dr. Horkheimer. <laughs> it was a split screen, and he said, we will never see seven again, but we will see six, and we'll see it in January of 2020 and sure enough there it was but there have been times when we've seen clumps of Capricorn planets and uh, that's usually a time when Republicans win because um, Capricorn rules history and it rules um, going back to the past and saving what's valuable from the past as planets go toward Aquarius each sign on the zodiac wheel makes up for what the sign before it lacked or didn't have. So you get a more liberal influence. But I can't tell you who's gonna win. I never know, I have no idea. We have to vote and we have to be registered. So I think it's really important that you do that. <laughs> and answer the census, my goodness. The more people that live in your town, the more money you get from the government. It would be a shame not to answer the census. And I did it. I thought, oh gosh, is this gonna be a long process? 
It took me three minutes. They hardly ask any questions at all. It was easy to find my name and where I had to go and bingo, I was right in. So be sure you do that. Also, while I'm giving you advice, give blood. There's a shortage of blood during the pandemic and I've had 40 blood transfusions in my life. So I have 40 people to thank that I don't know, that I will never meet, that kept me alive. It was over the course of my life, but one night I had 18 blood transfusions and I died on the table. If you give blood and it's not painful, they even give you cookies and stuff afterwards. They tell you your blood type. They tell you if you're anemic or not. There's all these little side benefits that nobody tells you about. You can go to the Red Cross. You can go to the local blood bank. There's many places you can go to give blood. You just Google it. Where can I give blood? And then you put your city and up comes all a million answers. But my whole company gives blood. And I had a one editor who uh, was a little scared. Is guy, and I said it's okay. You don't you don't have to. Just come with us, keep us company. He saw it wasn't scary. He went back and became one of the biggest donors, and and he was invited to dinners where they thanked donors and they gave him a special pin, and so he went from one extreme to the other, and I'm so proud of him. Wow. So, um, but you can't be anemic, so, but they'll tell you. If, if you have to shore yourself up, this is good, you find out. Anyway, next year, the thing that I'm looking at as the big, big message, Saturn and Uranus are clashing. They're clinging and clanging. They're giving birth to a new world order. And I think we saw that with the protesters. I'm ashamed to say I never knew that the police, not all of them, most are fine, I'm sure, but many are brutal and, and mean. And that many black men are afraid to be out at night and that their families teach them what to say if they get pulled over by a policeman. And, and Everyone needs to be treated by it with respect. So you're going to see a new world emerging starting next year. Saturn rules things of the past history, rules Capricorn. And Uranus is Aquarius, rules the future. And they're different, they're different animals and they're clashing, giving birth pangs to a new perspective, a new foundation, a more perfect union perhaps. But we all have to be part of this and there's no predestination in astrology. I think you will see more people volunteer, even if they can only give a few hours on a Saturday afternoon. You know, I read something on Twitter, actually, <laughs> you know, the post office is in trouble. You know, I mean, that's no secret. And, and um, Speaker Pelosi's asked for more funds for the post office. And Mr. Trump said no, because um, he's a little mad at the post office because Amazon uses the post office. It's a little circuitous, the thinking, but they said on Twitter, uh, the post office, if everybody buys one, one sheet of stamps, if everybody did that, we'd have $1.5 billion instantly. I think about it. I buy lots of stamps because it makes me happy. I love beautiful stamps. Anyway, we're going to have this new world order next year. And I was thinking about, you know, I grew up in hospitals. When you have a wound, they have to clean it. And it's not fun but it helps you heal. So while the wound is open, it hurts, and you sure don't like the iodine that goes in, but it keeps you from getting sick, and it's a good thing, and it's only a short period, 
and then you're able to mend. And I think life is that way. I think we have to be all part of the solution next year because it's going to be a better year in that this year Mars is retrograde in the fall and I'm going to talk about that on my next broadcast. And Venus is retrograde right now until the end of June, June 27th. It is, with all these retrogrades, right this minute in June, there are six retrograde planets. That means we're all walking through glue. And when Mars goes retrograde in the fall, even more so. I, um, I realize it's a time to look back and fix what's broken before the universe will open the door and let us move forward. We also have three eclipses this summer, which is why everybody's saying, what is going on? I mean, the whole world's on fire. Well, yeah, eclipses move us forward. Before you hear my next broadcast, I hope you'll look at my homepage on your laptop. It's easier to just go online. Although it is on my app, the premium version where you pay $4.99 a month. Apple and Google take 30%. That's why I have to charge $4.99, $4.99. But if you can um, read up on why eclipses are so important, uh, you'll get more out of my talk that's coming. Try to also find out your rising sign. The only way you can find that out is if you know what time you were born. If you have your birth certificate that the nurse wrote, the handwritten copy, it would be on there. If you have the computer copy from the DNV, it won't be on there. They take off all the interesting information, like how long you were, what's your father's middle name, and things like that, you know. They just drop off information, and you need the time of birth to the minute. If you cannot get it, ask your mother if she wrote a baby book. Lots of mothers did that, and maybe she recorded what time you were born. Or maybe an aunt or an uncle remembers, gee, I was just having dinner when your father called and said you were born. <laughs> Try to find out your rising sign because you need to take your rising sign and use it as if it's your sun sign. You need both. If you're only reading your sun sign, you're only getting half my forecast. If you're only reading your rising sign, you're only getting half. You need both. The sun is in the middle of the solar system. It is the heart. No planets march around Venus, Mercury, or Mars. They, they march around the sun, which is why the sun holds a special place in the, um, in the scheme of things. <laughs> so do your best to get your chart read. If you ever have your chart read and you leave the astrologer and she doesn't give you a copy of your, of your horoscope, ask her to send a picture of it to your cell phone. You should always have it with you. Some of you have signed up to have your a mini reading with Courtney O'Reilly, who is my first assistant. She works for me and she's excellent. She's been studying astrology. You can see her on Vibrant Soul Astrology. You can see what she looks like. That's her Instagram, Vibrant Soul Astrology. 